Nothing like this has ever been be t- done before in the whole world. This is a unique Canadian thing. And the CBC, who you spend $1.5 billion on Canadian uh, taxpayers, they didn't, they didn't see any worth to come and broadcast it. Tamara Ugolini here with Rebel News to bring you an interview with Ken Drysdale. He's a retired executive engineer whose specialties include forensic investigations and preparing reports. He also served as a commissioner with the National Citizens Inquiry, or the NCI, as it conducted broad and intensive two months long hearings into the ill effects imposed on Canadians through the COVID-19 purported health protection measures. It was part of the NCI's mandate to assess the proportionality and justification of the COVID-19 response measures implemented by government and unelected public health bureaucrats. The questionable adherence to these measures by the masses left many Canadians critical of the response and feeling like outliers if they so much as questioned it. But just last week, the commission released its final report, an extensive document spanning more than 5,300 pages. In it, the commissioners emphasized the need for more investigation and inquiry. However, they highlight the inherent conflict of interest involved with the government, which imposed these harsh and sweeping measures that cannot ethically and impartially investigate itself. Joining me now to discuss parts of this report, primarily the recommendations, is Mr. Drysdale. We are a citizen organized, a citizen run, a citizen funded initiative. We don't have a single large donor. We're doing this all on our own, almost exclusively by volunteers. We want to start a national dialogue. There are almost 80 pages of recommendations housed within this massive and time-consuming report, um, all of which are, I think, so important, and I'm sure you would agree. But are there some that give merit to others and some that are maybe more important to focus on than others? What are your views there on these recommendations and which ones are uh, in the hierarchy of importance? Well, you know, that that's an interesting question because we – internally had quite a bit of debate on that because, you know, our report goes through pretty much every aspect of society that was touched by these measures, you know, schools, churches, social, medicine, uh, unions, a labor law. Um, we, we had a, we had an absolutely broad mandate. So within the four commissioners, I can tell you, we, we had several good discussions about how we should prioritize them. And in the end, We decided we couldn't prioritize them because, frankly, what might be important to Tamara Ugolini might not be important to Ken Drysdale or or might not be important to some other listener or someone who testified. So, I mean, always front and center of our mind was fidelity. We wanted to be uh, have absolute fidelity to our testimonies that we heard from our witnesses who had courage enough to come out and testify. So. If we would have ranked them somehow in our own personal way, it would have taken away from that fidelity and 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 people might feel slighted by it. So we didn't do that, but we did break all of the recommendations up into four basic areas, uh, civil issues, which had to do with law, social issues, economics and health. And then within each of those, there's dozens of section headings and talk about that talk about our reasonings, the witnesses. Our, our our conclusions, and then providing our recommendations. I believe that the mainstream media was pivotal in the unfolding of the COVID hysteria. And if we had a media that actually upheld their mandate, which is to news gather, um, generate public discussion, public debate, and allow the public to make informed opinions on various topics, then none of this would have gone on the trajectory that it did. What are your recommendations there specifically for media and or government bailed out media? <laughs> well, our, our, we have some very specific, uh, there's a whole section on media. And we've actually split that discussion into two different parts. The first part is the uh, public broadcast or the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And the second part of that is the um, the what they they like to call themselves the private media or the, uh, the 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 privately owned media, which is really a misnomer, 
because what people don't know is how much the private broadcasters in Canada, how much money they get from um, from the government. And, and we're not just talking about television or radio. We're also talking about newspapers. You know, I was shocked to hear a speech by David Lease from the Frontier Centre not that long ago. And he told and he said in his speech that the Winnipeg Free Press, which is the main newspaper in, in, in Manitoba, gets over half of their funding from government sources or half of their budget comes from government sources, I think is what David Lee said. And that's shocking. So how can you expect the press uh, or the media to be fair and balanced when, you know, they are completely reliant on government uh, direct funding, grants, advertising dollars and all that from the government? I mean, it's incredible. So our, our recommendations are quite uh, poignant and quite I think they're quite innovative uh, on what we're saying in the media section, 8.4, which is page 604. And we have, again, we have recommendations broke down to privately owned media and the CBC. They're quite specific. They're very doable. And frankly, they're very necessary. And, and if you want to talk about the CBC, you know, the, the, the whole reason we formed the CBC in the first place, that reason no longer exists and in their current form, particularly given what they've done to Canadians, they should no longer exist, at least not in the form they're in now. Can you break that down for our viewers who may not be familiar? Why did the CBC form and what specifically are your recommendations to try to uphold a free independent press once again in this country? Well, you know, the CBC was originally formed because um, back in the 1930s or 40s when they formed it, it, it took millions of dollars and very specific expertise to bring bring about programming. And Canada was a little bit barren when it came to programming, news for the people, distribution system. So they set up the CBC in order to fulfill that need. The problem is now is that folks on the kitchen table can do programs themselves with very little in, uh, money. And those programs have a better reach than the CBC programs that we're paying the CBC $1.5 billion a year for. Now, when you add to that, at that insult, the injury from CBC where they, and, and to this day, they're, they're, they're saying that the, uh, the vaccines are safe and effective. As a matter of fact, when the NCI released our interim report about how the vaccines were authorized in Canada, one of the, I believe it was a CBC reporter went in and, and did posts saying it was ridiculous what we were saying. Well, tell me, I agree with them. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how the government got away with this and how the CBC supported them. But show me how we were wrong when we actually produced the legal documents that proved what we were saying was right. So the CBC hasn't learned their lesson. They will never learn their lesson. And again, our recommendations are are very significant when it comes to the CBC. Uh, when it comes to privately owned media, you know, I can perhaps sum that up in that the government needs to get the heck out of that. Um, they shouldn't be uh, responsible for a majority of the funding of these uh, uh, of these private media companies, and Canadians shouldn't be on the hook for it either. Speaking of legal documents, just last week, the Texas Governor General, Ken Paxton, launched a lawsuit against Pfizer for making misleading statements about their ineffective product, and it touched a little bit about adulteration as well. In your recommendations, is there anything that's similar to that where there could be some sort of accountability in the courts, but we also see in this report how compromised the courts are? So where could Canadians go to get that kind of advocacy, legal advocacy and accountability on their behalf? You know, that's a tough question, Tamara, and, and I do have an answer for you and an answer that actual uh, everyday Canadians can get behind. Um, I think it's going to take more than this. I think we, we, I would be more than happy to come back for a show on that. But essentially, you cannot expect the government to come to bear on this and, and tell us that they've done things wrong. You can't expect the government who did the deals, these, these fraudulent deals with these pharmaceutical companies to come out and all of a sudden police themselves. It's up to the Canadian people to take back their democracy and, and, and that's not as hard as folks might think. They, they've led us to believe it's, it's an almost impossible task, if not an impossible task. We have almost 50 percent of the population in federal and provincial elections that don't vote. And that's a travesty. And it's a false idea. Your vote does count. And in another show, I can prove to you in numbers how important each individual's vote is. And, and that is 
the way to do this. Don't wait for the government to pick up this report and go, oh, gee, we made a mistake. It's not going to happen. But when Canadians start to take back their 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 democracy, and it won't take long, it'll take about a, a, an election cycle. Um, and there's groups springing up all over Canada that are that are doing similar things in Manitoba. There's one called Manitoba Stronger Together .ca. In Alberta, there's Take Back Alberta, and there's the uh, Alberta Prosperity Project. Uh, they're, they're starting to pop up all over the country. Now, it's been almost a week, uh, you know, roughly five business days since this report was released. What has the feedback been like from the public, but also has there been any feedback from any of the elected you know, officials or the health overlords, as I call them, that were responsible for these COVID measures? Of course, the um, the government officials haven't made any infra- haven't made any statement that I'm aware of, and of course their their uh, their uh, media party, the CBC, and most of the other mainstream media didn't even attend. Now I want to make I want to let your listeners know exactly what this thing is about. It only take me a minute, and that is nothing like this has ever been be t- done before in the whole world. This is a unique Canadian thing, and the CBC who you spend $1.5 billion on Canadian uh, taxpayers, they didn't, they didn't see any worth to come and broadcast it. Uh, CPAC was. CPAC did broadcast it. They broadcasted our interim report, too, and it's had tremendous t- tens of thousands, if I haven't checked lately, but probably hundreds of thousands of views from Canadians right across the country. So don't expect the government to pick this up and do anything with it. You know, we subpoenaed. 63 different government officials to come and testify, and none of them showed up. And I think only one or two of them actually acknowledged the subpoena. So if you think, if if the Canadian public thinks that their public representatives respect them, think again. It's up to us. Just in closing, Ken, what is one actionable item, viewers who do feel like they have lost their democratic voice, what is one actionable item or a step they can take to make this report count and to advocate for change and hopefully that accountability that we talked about? You know, the first step is to make sure that everybody knows about it. And, you know, everyone has the ability of, of of talking to their sister or their brother or their cousin or their neighbor. Maybe if you're in the line at the grocery store, you might be able to start up a conversation with someone and say, hey, did you hear about, you know, but don't push it. Don't, don't, don't flood people with information. Just start up a conversation. Say, did you hear about, what do you think about this? But everybody has that capability. Not everybody can stand up and speak or give interviews or, or, or write documents, but we can all say hello to our neighbor and say, what do you think about this? One final point. Will there be more from the NCI? How, what's, what's the next step here? The, the report's done. The commission's concluded. Is there anything next for the NCI? Absolutely. We're putting together action teams right now, and they're spreading across the country. And we're, we're going to be delivering these uh, reports um, right across the country to every elected official, every municipal government, federal government, provincial government, Everybody's going to get copies of this thing. We, the, the report is currently available as a PDF in different formats on the website. And just this morning, I submitted the, uh, the uh, files for printing. So we'll be getting them printed out as well. And, and in print, believe it or not, it's 11 volumes long. <laughs> Wow, it truly is a mammoth. But again, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what is more important than 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 the rest, because this is the true, you want to talk about lived experience. Well, this is the true lived experience of Canadians and how devastatingly harmful the purported health protection measures were on them. So thanks again, Ken. Appreciate your time and your dedication to this topic. Always a pleasure to get to talk to you, Tamara. Both the Commission's interim and final report highlights the lack of justification and questionable data used to roll out the novel mRNA products. If you would like to see them revoked from the market completely, then please head on over to our website at nomoreshots.ca. At that special website, you can sign our petition and send a form email to Minister Holland demanding him to do just that. While you research our previously well-sourced reports on the topic, find out more at nomoreshots.ca.